Lee Phillip, host of Channel 2's Noon Break, is truly the first lady of Chicago television. But broadcasting was not her chosen field. She wanted to be a bacteriologist. But a part-time job in her father's West Suburban flower shop led her to the medium that would soon be part of her life. It was the early 50s, and local TV programmers were looking for low-budget ways to spruce up their shows. A local floral association was offering free flowers and segments on flower arranging to any TV station interested. Well, there was a TV station interested, and part-time flower shop worker Lee Phillip made her first TV appearance, arranging flowers. Shortly after that first appearance, Lee received a call from Red Quinlan, general manager of WBKB-TV, who said he liked her flower act and asked if she'd like a job. Lee accepted, and the very next day, she began her career and her long-running relationship with Chicago television audiences. Over the years, Lee Phillip has hosted over 10,000 television programs, and at one point in the early days, she did five shows a day seven days a week. On Meet Miss Lee and Morning Miss Lee, she served as the station's chief weathercaster and also wore her first hat, which for many years was her TV trademark. The Friendship Show, broadcast from 1955 to 1965, was a children's program which introduced youngsters to their heroes and also offered comfort to those left homeless and confined to hospitals. The CBS News special, Saturday Night Fixture, gave Lee the distinction of being Chicago's first news anchor woman. Lee is shown here with Jerry Dunphy and another familiar Chicago face, Fahey Flynn. In addition to news, Lee also handled variety shows as hostess of Lee Phillips Chicago. But to most Chicagoans of the 50s and early 60s, Lee is best remembered for her longest running programs, Shopping with Miss Lee and The Lee Phillips Show both of which dealt with the traditional homemaker roles of wife and mother. Visiting celebrities joined Lee daily, as did a host of traveling authors and politicians. Oftentimes, Lee would take her viewers to faraway places, like Paris and Rome, where she would interview leaders of the fashion world and offer sneak previews of coming fashion trends. But during the same era, Lee also concerned herself with community service. People in need knew they had a friend in Lee Phillip. In fact, Lee was one of the first Chicago broadcasters to realize the power of the medium to serve people as well as to entertain them. Lee's concern for people was real, and viewers knew it. In the summer of 1956, Chicago was in the throes of a polio epidemic. Realizing the severity of the problem, Lee worked daily with city health officials to combat the spread of the crippling disease. Each day, she would alert Chicagoans as to where city mobile inoculation units were to be dispatched. And immediately after each program, she herself would volunteer her time in the battle against polio. During the height of Operation Inoculation, 40,000 Chicago youngsters were vaccinated daily, and countless lives were saved. City Health Commissioner Dr. Herman Bundesen said that the effort would not have been a success without the tireless efforts of Lee Phillip. Also in 1956, Lee focused attention on the problem of teenage pregnancy, and specifically the problems facing unwed mothers. The Foundlings Home on the city's west side was in need of additional facilities. Their mission to help the unwed mother and unwanted child was being hampered by an inadequate physical plant. Through constant exposure of the problem and continuous mentions by Lee during her programs, there was a positive resolution to the immediate problem at hand. On September 28, 1957, ground was broken for a new foundlings home in a ceremony attended by Lee, Mayor Richard Daly, and Dr. Carl Meyer, head of all Cook County institutions. The dual efforts in behalf of polio inoculations and the focusing of attention on the unwed mothers of Chicago resulted in Lee receiving McCall's Magazine Award for her outstanding public service to the family. In addition to her recognition from McCall's magazine, Lee also has many other awards and citations to her credit. In 1955, TV Guide recognized her as Chicago's favorite female television personality. In 1958, she received the first of 15 local Emmy Awards, presented by the Chicago chapter of the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, including the prestigious Governor's Award in 1977. 
In addition to a room full of local Emmys, in 1976, Lee won the coveted National Emmy for her documentary, Forgotten Children, a moving look at foster care and the bureaucracy that surrounds it. It's a very exciting evening, and our deep gratitude goes to Neil Darrell, who is CBS Vice President and General Manager in Chicago for his help and his support, and to you, the members of the Academy, and to the entire staff of WBBM Television in Chicago. They are hardworking, wonderful people, and I'm so proud to be one of them. And in 1972, Lee was once again ahead of her time, with a probing look at rape, focusing not only on the indignity of the crime, but also on the insensitivity of some charged with investigating it. The Rape of Paulette was a first-rate documentation of a social injustice. The program received the DuPont Columbia Award for excellence in broadcast journalism. Paulette is young and attractive, but many rape victims are not. Jenny is 73 years old. She was attacked by a robber in her home last month and we talked with her a few hours after it happened. He come in the bedroom, and uh, I was frightened. So I was laying in the bed yet, and he made me get out all of the bed. He made me take all my uh, cl uh, clothes off, my nightgown and everything. Then he threw me on the bed. I was shaking all over, but I couldn't do anything. He gave me no chance to, to scream. The Rape of Paulette was another of Lee Phillips' documentaries that had results. After viewing the program, the Cook County State's Attorney asked for a copy of the show so that all those working future rape cases would be more sensitive to the issue. During this program, Lee demonstrated once again her ability to be probing and compassionate, a combination that was also displayed in Lee's pioneering efforts in the war against breast cancer. Realizing the breast cancer issue and the medical and psychological problems associated with it, Lee once again brought the problem together with the solution. Self-breast examination was the first step in combating the cancer. And in one of television's most important broadcasts, Lee Phillip was there. When you went into surgery, you didn't know whether you'd come out with one right. breast or two. Right. And uh, you, can, you can't describe how you feel, you know, and then... Thank, thank God, you know, I, I was lucky. Now, you went through that one. A year later, what happened? I went to my doctor again for my yearly checkup, and the lump came back. And he t told me, he said, we have to take it out. He, so I went in again, and I thought, oh, no, how lucky can you be? You just two times in a row. And within a year, I figured it grew so fast that it had to be malignant in the... He took it out, and uh, I was just, it was a fibristic cyst, and it was not malignant. In calling attention to the breast cancer problem and the possible solutions, Lee was in a familiar position, in the forefront. For throughout her long and distinguished career, Lee has been a pioneer, not only in terms of service, but more importantly in terms of realizing the potential and power of television to serve the community and alert them to the ills that need cures. Lee Phillip and Chicago Television are synonymous. They have grown up together. Her lasting career is the result of her versatility, intelligence, professionalism, and most of all, her concern for others. Lee Phillip also possesses an unyielding desire to grow and change with the times. Society has changed a lot since Lee first appeared and arranged flowers on TV in the early 50s, and so has Lee Phillip. What served viewers of the 1950s does not work today. Viewers of the 1980s have different needs. They ask different questions. In September of 1977, a forum for the new generation of Chicago television viewers was introduced. It was called Noon Break, a daily discussion of news and current events. Instead of the food and fashions of the 50s, it was issues and answers that concerned the audience. And Lee Phillip was there again. On noon break, Lee works together with Harry Porterfield and Harry Volkman in providing a complete package of news, views, and information. But at the heart of the program is Lee Phillip, Chicago Television's first lady, a dedicated communicator who helped nurture an infant industry and bring it in touch with the community it serves.